Hello there, I'm Liam O'Connell. I'm the Operations Director at the CK Group. You probably know some of our brands, the CK Science, CK Clinical and CK Technical. The reason we're here today is to answer a number of questions related to all the changes coming in with in regards to IR35, as we find that quite a lot of our contractors are still unsure as to how this will affect them. So what we've done is we've brought together a number of people who hopefully answer some of your questions on this. I'll let them introduce themselves here. Hi, I'm Russell Oakley. Um, I work in the CK Clinical Division of the CK Group. Um, within that division, we do have a lot of uh, outside IR35 contractors currently, um, and we are obviously getting bombarded with quite a lot of questions at present um, about those statuses and what's going to happen in the next few weeks coming up to the 6th of April. Um, so I'm here to kind of give that alternative perspective really on what the contractors are actually saying and what questions we're getting asked on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks Russell. Hi I'm Chris Humphries from BHP Chartered Accountants. I'm a tax partner with over 25 years experience advising both personal and corporate tax um, and I'm really here to keep these two on the straight and narrow. <laughs> Russ you've got a number of questions there oh, from yeah. contractors. Should, so, we, should we start going through them? Yeah absolutely yeah. Um, so I guess it's probably aimed at you Chris. Um, What's the background to all the changes? Why is it kind of coming to force? Uh, that's a good question, Russ. I mean, actually, in order to understand the background, you have to go back 19 years because IR35, or the tax legislation around mm. it, was actually introduced in the year 2000. And the idea was that the government, the HMRC, were starting to look at how people were taxed when they were engaged through an intermediary mm. and really looking to tax them as if they were an employee. Yeah. So time moved on, the rules haven't changed a huge amount, there's been quite a lot of tax law, but then in about April 2016, the government started to get really nervous about how much uh, income was generated from that part of the uh, tax rules. And in particular, they focused their, um, their changes on the public sector. So in April 2017, the off-payroll working rules were changed in relation to the public sector, and the government leads us to believe that actually it raised £500 million in additional revenue each yeah. year from it. So following on from that success, they then thought, well, actually, shall we now apply it to the private sector? And that's where we are today. Yeah. Okay. It was due to an awful lot of was because there was um, a lot of stuff in relation to the BBC yeah. and the public sector and that wasn't people being paid huge amounts of money without being pay, paying a lot of tax. Yeah, OK. I mean, that's, it's a good way of looking at it. I mean, when we talk about it as IR35, actually the rules haven't changed with it, in relation to IR35 since the year 2000. Yeah. But it's interesting to talk briefly about some of the tax cases that are around. Um, largely high-profile people working for either Look North or the BBC or ITV, um, talking in particular about Lorraine Kelly. Mm -hmm. That was one of the big mm -hmm. cases that were around. Yeah. Um, Christa Ackroyd was yeah, another yeah, one. Yeah. And that really defined the way in which the government and the revenue would consider somebody's status when looking at IR35. Um, the changes we're talking about today are actually the administration of who determines when IR35 applies yeah. and whether you are inside or outside IR35. That's the change. The r rules are as they were and tax case law has been quite active around it. Yeah, because the legislation actually hasn't changed at all. The legislation hasn't changed. I think that kind of proves it, the point there, that people are getting confused with that matter. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and that's clear what I'm seeing with some of the contractors out there is they're not quite sure why it suddenly changed. Well, it's it's actually the decisions being made by a different party within the chain of process. Within the relationship, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So we're looking yeah. predominantly at personal service companies where contractors have their own personal service company yeah. that they use to engage with the end user. Um, and generally that means that the test as to whether they're caught by IR35 has been determined by them themselves. Yeah. Yeah. The change in the rules from the 6th of April as it applies to the private sector, is that it will now be the end user that will determine uh, that status yeah. and will say actually whether you are inside or outside IR35. Um, the rules themselves, keep going on about it, have not changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, um, we've answered some of the other questions on there, but um, what tests should clients and contractors undertake to determine uh, their IR35 states. I guess this is a question for both yeah. of you, really. A little, little bit, I, yeah. There, there are a lot of tests out there at the moment. Mm. Um, the government have got the SAS test, yeah. which um, they've tweaked quite a lot That's over right. the last uh, yeah, yeah. Um, number of months. Um, but it is the one that HMRC are recommending to everybody to use, yeah. as they will follow the recommendations 
once you've undertaken the CES test. Now this is for the hiring company, the end users to do it. Um, and if the contractor is interested to see whether they're inside or IO outside IO35, they can actually do the test themselves. Yeah. Um, and it will give them the answer. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's fairly rigorous as to how they're going to implement that. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of, uh, we're seeing quite a lot of um, our clients are using different tests. Yeah, there's different people out there. None of them yeah. are, are HMRC approved. Yes, so actually even the though they all say they oh, are. Agreed, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think a lot of them are actually indemnifications, aren't they? They're yes. companies that provide the yeah. indemnity against. Uh, there's an element to that. I mean, there are two parts to the, um, the status test. The, mm -hmm. the one is that the rules now say that from the 6th of April, you must take reasonable care when determining somebody's status. Right. And reasonable care in the revenue land is, a, is using some of these tools to consider whether somebody is inside or outside IR35. As long as you've used the tool, whether it's CEST or a mm -hmm. third party provider, yeah. you will be deemed to have taken reasonable care. Yeah. Um, the benefit of, of CEST or any other tool is that then you are determining the status of mm. the, um, the consultant, the contractor. And you must issue them with a status determination which is actually a formal determination as to what you, as the end user, think their status is, right. whether you are inside or outside the IR35. Right. And having issued that determination, the end user should then treat that contractor on the basis of that determination. So if the determination says that you are inside IR35, then all of a sudden you're into pay as you earn, national insurance, employers' national mm. insurance, which is what the government are yep. after. If you're outside IR35, then your relationship is as it was. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. What I'm seeing from a lot of contractors is this, we're at this stage now where this determination has been done. Mm. What can they do? Can they challenge it? Well, you, yeah, yeah, I mean, you can challenge yeah. it. There yeah. is a framework that says that you've got 45 days to, to challenge it and then for the end user to respond. Yeah. So there is a framework then that you can say, actually, well, I don't agree with what you've said. Mm -hmm. If ultimately the status determination is changed because of that, then mm -hmm. that's fine. You've had the right outcome. If you still can't agree, then actually the recent consultation says that the only way you can challenge it is through your self-assessment return, yes, it is. Yes. which is a strange sort of way of doing it yep. because usually the self-assessment return follows a year and a half afterwards. Yeah. You know, so it's a strange one. Yes. I mean, the, the other thing we're seeing um, is an awful lot of clients, particularly the large clients, oh are doing a blanket uh, determination and saying that every contract role is inside IR35. Yeah. Um, and if you don't want to work on that basis, you don't work for don't the work companies. Yeah. Um, and this is followed on the banks started doing that yeah. and now the major pharma a lot of the major pharma companies are doing that. And obviously that's a decision then for the contractor as to whether they want to stay working with that company. Yeah. Uh, I think that, that's right. You, I mean, you've got to consider the commercial risk in this. Yeah. Having changed the nature or, or the responsibility for doing the status determination, who is at risk of having it challenged by the revenue? Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be the financial institution yes. or the pharma company. And so because of that, they've taken the stance that actually we're going to reclassify everybody yep. and, yeah. and bring them onto the books and treat them as if they were employees. Uh, yes. So we're finding yeah. that as a recruitment organisation, the, the big farmer are saying, this is what we've got. You have to advertise every position as inside IO35 yeah. from now on. So that means that they're saying any people who are working outside IO35 come 6th of the April, April have to switch to contracts to either be on a PAYE basis yeah. or they have to... Uh, and and the impact of that is a mathematical one. Yeah. Because yep. having, if you're paid the same rate as you were as, a, as a, an outside IR35 contractor, then you're about 10 to 11, 12% worse off as a and result of it. In certain cases, in certain cases. more. Yeah, uh, possibly, yeah, yeah. You have more. to do the maths on it, yep. I think, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a, a difficult situation for people to, to adjust to. Yeah, and I suppose that's part of the role of this presentation today because what we've found is that where people have been wholly reclassified, they've tried to raise their point with the contractors mm. and say, actually, you know, can we talk about our 35 and our yeah. relationship? And actually, the, the engagers are saying, well, we don't really know about it. We don't really yeah. want to get involved in it. It's our commercial risk. Let's reclassify everybody. Yeah. yeah. So with the people who are, um, where it's been a blanket change to being inside IO35, yeah. if as a contractor you want to challenge the role, you have to wait till you're, uh, you're doing your... You're, you're determined, yeah. 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 It's interesting to talk a bit more about CEST. I mean, it's the mm. Czech Employment Status Tool. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was written by the revenue as a means for you to go in and check your status, yeah. either yourself personally or, or the people that you contract with. Um, you can't break it. Right. Yeah. It's a software package. You can play around with it, give different answers. It will give you a view as to whether you are inside or outside IR35. Unfortunately, the software isn't as dynamic as it should be. 
Yeah. And I think at one point, actually, it didn't even deal with whether you were inside or outside the public or private sector. No, it didn't. It didn't. Yeah. And then uh, various occasions it has changed overnight. Yeah. Uh, the, the questions. Um, I can guarantee that it won't break it. I have tried. Yeah. I mean, I and I, I've break. not been yeah, able Liam to. Liam is, yeah. But, and, you know, I'm, I'd but be, I'm going to break it. Call, call, I yeah, think. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Because, uh, because Russell's right. The, the end, using third party providers isn't any stronger than using CEST, yeah. but you might well get the indemnification. Yeah. I think what we're seeing is there's a lot of companies out there that are, are, are maybe in partnership with in-house MSPs and things like that that yeah. are agreeing to indemnify both the client and the contractor, contractor. Yeah. if they have a, an assessment tool that matches up kind yeah, of thing, yeah. or a, a result from that assessment tool that matches up. Mm. Um, and we've had some pushback, as you can yeah, probably imagine. Yeah. Um, some people have just gone with it. Um, but it is, it's, it's a, a very, you know, I guess, trying time for those people. It's a, 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 new, it's a new concept. New concept. Um, but the tests haven't changed. No, not so actually, they should all have been aware exactly. of those tests when considering their own status anyway. Yeah. Yeah. There's an interesting dynamic about the status determination in that you don't just have to give it to the um, the contractor; you have to give it to everybody in the chain. Yes. yes. So that you're all aware of your responsibilities. Right. So actually, having it given it to um, an umbrella company or an agency, it's also their responsibility to then pass that down the chain as Absolutely. well, yeah. and keep passing it down so yeah. that the end user knows what their status is, whether they're inside or outside yeah. IR35. If that's done correctly, yeah. then the liability, if it's challenged mm -hmm. and reasonable care has been taken, will flow all the way to the contractor. Yeah. If, however, there is a flaw in the way that it's been done or somebody hasn't taken reasonable care, then the liability can stick with somebody else in the chain. Yeah. So from a recruitment point of view, once we get the information through from the hiring company, the end user, yeah. we'll be passing that information straight down to the next yeah, person. Yeah, agreed. And chain. that's good practice. Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Um, Okay, one of the questions that I've been hearing quite a lot of is how is a person reclassified as a as a contractor? You know, what what makes their particular contract something that's suddenly now been deemed inside IR thirty five? Mm. Well, I, I think to answer that, you've got to look at the case law that's been established yeah. over the last nineteen years, and back yeah. to some of the high profile cases I've talked about. Um, it, it goes to whether the contract is one of a contract of service or a contract for service. Yeah. So if you're an employee and the nature of your relationship is such that you, you work like an employee, it means that you can't control how you work, mm -hmm. you're told where to work and how to work, what time to turn up, how many hours, who to report to, yeah. you fit into the appraisal system, mm. all those sort of things. Um, people require you to turn up mm -hmm. and do your job yeah. and there's yeah. something called, um, which is quite an important test, called mutuality of obligation. Yeah. Which is an obligation it on the. Confuses a lot of yeah, people. Around yeah, around, it? and, yeah, and it, it's it's quite a strong test. The fact that there's a contract in place between two people, two parties, doesn't mean there's mutuality of obligation. Yeah. It's it's stronger. It's it's, it's if I turn up, um, I can rec make sure request that you give me work, mm -hmm. and also there's an obligation the other way for you to give me work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's where the mutuality goes. Yeah. In terms of a, a self-employed a, a contract, an outside IR35 contract. Um, the mutuality of obligation can be there because there's a contract, but actually there's no uh, responsibility on the end user to give you work all the time. No. They might engage you for one project. Yeah. And there's no obligation on you to take it if it's given. No. So there's a real risk reward on who's doing the work. Yeah. Yeah. And that ultimately is the is the sort of real test of yeah, self-employed. Yeah, sense, you know, yeah. A, a, is there a, a financial risk in what you're doing? Yeah. If, if you don't turn up, you don't get paid. If you're sick, um, which is quite topical at the yeah. moment, you, yeah. you, you don't get paid. Um, there's no holiday pay, anything else around that. Yeah. Um, and all of those tests have come um, through the case law that we talked about. Mm -hmm. But even then, what the case law shows is it's on the terms of the specific case right. and the relationship in the round. So the Lorraine Kelly case mm. was actually that um, she was the new brand, right. the new sort of, she had control over how her program um, worked and who was interviewed on it and how what the content was. Yeah. But they were actually paying her for the brand of Lorraine Mm -hmm. on that program that's what they wanted right. whereas Krista Ackroyd was 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 in a similar vein she was engaged to try and increase the ratings for look north I think it yeah. was yeah. at the yeah. time yeah. and um, but she was told who to have on and who to interview it's more like yeah. yeah. So there was bringing in then as well. You had the supervision, direction, and control. Yeah, played a all major the, part. Absolutely. Of yeah, yeah. And yeah. that that seems to be one that the, we found that the, when the companies are making the determination, it seems to be one of the the, the key areas. The that key area. Looking at. And then the, 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 I suppose another key area which people try and use to knock them outside of the IR35 rules is the substitution clause. Yes. 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 
Uh, and uh, I mean, that's a difficult one because if you've got a contract with a, an end user and it says that if I'm not available, then you know I can send a substitute. Mm. You know, you've got to agree who that substitute is, but I yeah. can send one. Um, then that should get you outside of the IR35 rules. Yeah. But you, you c uh, it's got to have reality. Yeah. And have the ability to actually have a substitute that's available yeah. and acceptable. And then the companies were, if the company then has to interview the substitute and go through the whole process again, kind of. Yeah. It's yeah. You the know, nature of the industry as well is that a farm, pharma biotech and, and <sighs> industries are so highly regulated. Yeah. yeah. The, the amount of compliance and screening. And, yeah. You know, kind yeah, of. Um, and that is helpful. Yeah. But, you know, obviously you, you've been engaged on those terms, you've, mm. you've been screened, you've got the technical yep. expertise yeah. and sign off. Um, but let's say, for example, you can't attend to do your project. Yeah. Um, if it's down to you to find that substitute, mm -hmm. then that's quite a strong sort of risk reward relationship. Yeah. If, however, the pharma company already knows another 10 yeah. that they could find in, as a replacement for you, then that oh. sort of weakens it a little bit. Same. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one of the things that we will probably, well, we're starting to see a little bit of is a movement towards more statement of work type contracts. Correct, absolutely, the yeah. industry. Yeah, yeah. Um, which obviously will do away with whether somebody's inside or outside IR35 because mm. it's for that specific That specific project and that's the risk. You're yeah. engaged purely yeah. to do that project. Yeah. It's under your control how and when you do it. Yes. Uh, success will be whether you do the project or not and yeah. actually you're reporting in a different way. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I mean, it, it, it is interesting because certain areas of the farm industry it does fit naturally yeah, into that yeah. um, and we're, we as a, as a recruiter are starting to see more companies asking us have you got a statement of work contract so we can give yeah. you the work. I mean way. bizarrely it contrasts very directly with my industry where we have people who have to fill in timesheets mm. yeah. and account for their yeah. quarter of an hour of every quarter of an hour of time yeah. Yeah. and they've got to be there from 9 to 5.30 so those sort of tests um, are much yeah. more directly controlled yes. so I think the statement of work actually will be a good good outcome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah so those are the sort of tests you apply. Yeah. Um, one of the questions that I'm asked quite often is, if I am reclassified, does that mean that the revenue will come and look at every other year when I was outside IR35? Yeah, good question. That is one thing. That and, and it, I, I mean, well. sometimes people are quite cynical about HMRC, but there was a statement from the Treasury yes. that said that they wouldn't look to look to wouldn't look at earlier years of somebody that had been reclassified if there was no evidence of um, fraudulent activity mm. or yeah. um, illegal activity. Yeah. Yeah. So they had the review. Recently, Absolutely. in February, and I, I was over with HMRC on that review, which was quite interesting. Um, yeah, so th there were a few changes that have come out mm. of that, which mm. they're not huge, but they make it slightly easier. It's meant to be easier. easier to implement and easier yeah. to control, yeah. and a, probably a bit of a lighter touch in terms of people who are reclassified yes. or not. Yes, I mean, one of the things they said is that um, if, if people make a genuine mistake over the next year, yeah. The, if so long as it's genuine and it's not fraudulent, people won't be punished for yeah. it, whether a uh, hiring company or the individual. Yeah, themselves. and that is a sensible approach, I think. Absolutely, it's going to give time to bed it in. Yeah. Um, the, one of the other interesting uh, things they've come out with is if you are uh, hiring somebody and your legal entity is based abroad and you do not have entities within the UK, mm. the rules don't apply. No, agreed. So yeah. um, if you're uh, uh, working through your P PCS, PSC sorry, here in the UK for somebody abroad, it yeah. doesn't apply to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you would need to consider what the rules were in the offshore jurisdiction. Of whether it, Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Absolutely. But it, it, it's interesting. And they, they've also said that um, it's only going to kick in for work or for work that's undertaken after, after the, the 6th, 6th of April. April. Yeah. Not work that's been undertaken before the 6th of April. So yeah. you might send in your invoices that are for all of March and you might send them in at the end of April. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, but it's for work that you actually undertake after the 6th of April. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. we made representation to HMRC about that as well as a number of other recruitment companies because it seems slightly unfair. Yeah, yeah. Um, for the company. Yeah, we, I mean, we we made quite a few representations uh, when the rules were originally introduced back in July. Mm. Um, there was a consultation process yes, we lasted quite a long time. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, there was a quite a lot of momentum within the recruitment industry and, and also in the contractor industry, which actually can we you know, defer this? Yeah. It seems quite a draconian bit of legislation. Yeah. And so one of the things we were looking for in the budget was whether that defer would take place. Yes. And actually, all that happened was they confirmed it was going to happen. Yes, they said it was definitely going to happen because yeah. we should make quite a bit of money out of it. Yeah. Um, however. 
uh, it is what it is. Yeah. It doesn't apply to small and medium sized enterprises, so there is a, sk- a yeah. size test. That was going to be my next question. Is there, yeah. Are there any exemptions, I guess? Yeah, so it's, it's largely linked to the, um, the audit threshold. Yes. Mm. Yeah, so if yeah. you look at the audit thresholds, um, 10.2 million, isn't correct, it? Correct, yeah. Uh, yeah. Turnover. Yeah. Uh, 50 yep. employees and 5.1 million on the balance, balance sheet. sheet. So Correct. Two of those. Two of those. Two of those. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, but then you've got the difficulty is like um, with a company. So you, let's say you're a small company and I'll say to you, are, are you inside? Uh, is mm. it all going to be inside? So how do you make the determination then of what size company you are? Agreed. What accounts do you basically Yeah, yeah, which ones? Yeah, yeah. Also, you've got, I mean, we, we've had it recently actually, you know, if you're a smaller entity in the UK mm. does it, it, it are we classing the whole global network of this com- company or is it just the UK part of it where we're looking at the 10 million and the, on, on and the, the limits yeah on the limits yeah. yeah so the limits for audit purposes would apply to the standalone company right okay so i think that's the way it would apply it's sort of tend to both. yeah yeah kind of yeah thing. Yes. No, that's interesting yeah. Yes. We do have some smaller biotechs, as you know, there are some yeah. smaller biotechs within various business parts around the UK and they're quite small entities yeah. and I'm sure their balance sheets kind of tick the box, but, um, you know, their headquarters are based in San Francisco yeah, and they yeah. Uh, yeah. employ about 50 staff over there, so yeah. it's, um, mm. yeah, okay. So, but you would, you have to, you, as, a, as a contractor or as a recruitment company, you have to base on trust on what you are told. Absolutely. By the by, this organisation. Yeah, so and then yeah. it goes to the reasonable care piece. Yeah. You know. yeah. yeah, yeah. I know we've created a document to, to get clients to, yeah. you know, kind of agree, to, yeah. agree to those points. And it's there, based right? on the last year's fully audited accounts. Yeah, the last year's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not current information not current up to information. date. So not information at sixth of April. It's the last set of accounts. So companies could either go into a situation where they will have to do the test or it may be the opposite way. Yeah, yeah, great. It could come in and out. Yeah, you've got to keep it under review all the time. Interesting dynamic then. You're within the personal service company. Um, You've been engaged in that way for a number of years, traded quite successfully, but then you're reclassified. Mm. And what do you do with your personal service Mm. company? So you can keep it. Yeah. And just keep it running and running. You've got all the admin costs and uh, sort of legal costs of doing that. Or it is possible that you could just liquidate it. Right. So quite a lot of people have done that because okay, actually, right, okay. yeah, You've be- seen, seen a yeah. Like so that. so the the principle of the personal service company was that you were paying um, corporation tax mm-hmm. on your profits, your results, yeah. and then withdrawing your value out by way of a dividend. But quite a lot of those entities said, well, actually, I'll only take out enough to live on, and then I'll warehouse the rest yeah. into my distributor mm-hmm. reserves. And so having be reclassified, you could actually then wind that company up and right. distribute the reserves. And in doing that, you'd effectively be able to realise yeah. them as a capital gains tax yeah. um, income, t- a capital gains tax charge. Right, which yeah. obviously after the budget was probably not as not as good as it, used as it was. To be. <laughs> well, uh, I think it w- the government view is it would cover most people. Yeah. Um, so you can make it. You can make a million pounds. Yes. Yeah, you can make a million pounds with a gain, and quite yeah. a lot of these personal service companies are owned by husbands and wives yes. as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they've been structured correctly. Yeah. Okay. okay. I've kind of come across some of these questions dealing with contractors recently, but for any advice to contractors, what should they be doing now? What's the best kind of possible thing that they can be doing at present other than waiting for their... No, I think I think you can be more active than that. Yeah. I think you need to start playing around with CEST mm-hmm. yourself yeah. to see what yes. the outcome of that would be based on you answering the questions. Okay. As I say, you can't break it. Yep. Um, you can very quickly get to an answer that says that you are... Um, Outside IR35, yeah. similarly you can get to one that says you're inside. Yeah. If you are inside, then I would suggest you then start to have a dialogue with the end user, mm-hmm. either in relation to whether you are likely to be reclassified or not, and if you are likely to be reclassified, what's your rate going to be? Because yeah. it's your one chance to negotiate what your rate's yeah. going to be. And we are seeing that with some clients, that they realise that you know the, these roles are not going to be reclassified in any other way other than being inside IR35 yeah, yeah. and therefore negotiations are now starting with individuals on getting an uplift on their initial rate. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like maybe to cover to, to national insurance. Yeah, to cover yeah. Yeah. around yeah. 13.8% yeah. plus maybe the uh, apprenticeship Chip levy on top. Yeah, on top of that. because obviously the end user is looking to pass that on. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. You know, and it's that negotiation about whether you split it or, you know, yeah. or whether the end user takes it all. Yeah, so I mean, obviously some end users are saying, well, no, I'm not paying any more. Yeah. Because this is what is the same service. Yeah, yeah. Whereas others are are taking it on board and saying, well, actually, we can see how their take home is going to be reduced quite dramatically. Yeah. Let's see if we can help on that, and they'll split the difference uh, nearly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know the outcome of this could be quite draconian in some particular instances, 
but uh, quite clearly the revenue view is that um, there is something wrong with how people are classifying themselves. Yeah. They believe that one in ten do it incorrectly. And so they're trying to put attention in there. Mm -hmm. It actually says, well, can we change the emphasis and the responsibility to see if that changes how yeah. people are classified? Yeah. And then the impact, as I say, could be additional revenue, about £3 billion a year, which is a lot yeah. of money. So that's why I always knew it was going to turn up. Yeah, yeah. Just a matter of time. I, I yeah. suppose one of the, the, the things to think about for, for people who are going inside IO35 is that they are going to get additional benefits. Oh, agreed. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, they get the paid holidays, yeah. pension contributions. Sick leave. Sick leave. It's particularly at the moment, yeah, very, very uh, yeah, yeah, uh, useful. So, and, and then they have access to whether they're working through agencies, other agencies yeah. offer yeah. Yeah. agencies offer a lot of other benefits, yeah, as well, which will vary. Well, exactly. I mean, as an agency, we are looking at some of our clients and trying to renegotiate mm. uh, bill rates with them to try and incorporate additional benefits like private medical, yeah, yeah. Uh, dental, yeah, things yeah. like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously, at this stage. You know, we're, we're we're kind of hemmed in with the the bill rates that we have, yeah. but but there are potentials there to will do be that. A, almost like and a break clause yeah. or a change. And, 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 yeah. and that will, in a sense, that is a slight positive that's come out of it. Yeah. I guess from a contractor's perspective. Um, and, and going back to the mutuality obligation, you'll actually be in a position where a contract says you've got to give me work. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. 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 And you're I, not at risk anymore. The paid holidays are a huge mm. uh, difference for people because obviously if you're Outside IO35, you were not paid when you weren't there. Oh, great, yeah. Um, whereas yeah. now you'll actually be paid for yeah. 52 weeks of the year. Yeah, correct, um, yeah. So it should balance out a little bit. In terms that, that's of the what the hope would be, yeah. yeah. I suppose there's also the AWR uh, kind of regulations yeah. that kind of come in as well to these contractors, which means they're now eligible to get some of the same rights as, as permanent staff on mm -hmm. the site as yes. well. So things like parking spaces or, you know, access to creches and things like Crash that. There are clients yeah. out there that, that don't see limited company or personal service company within that threshold. So therefore, they have to park off site and various yeah. other things. Yeah, yeah. So there's additional things as well that I guess, um, you know, kind of put a bit of extra icing on top of the cake in a sense. Yeah. So I think in a roundabout way we're saying it might be no bad thing, but you just need to work through it. Yeah. yeah. It, it'll take a little bit of getting used to. I think so, yeah. yeah. Because it'll be a change, complete different way of, of, of earning your remuneration. I think that's right. Um, but And you will take a bit of a hit, but hopefully over a period of time it'll balance out. And that hit hopefully will be compensated by other rights that you've Absolutely. never had before, which yeah. will give you some sort of financial yeah. security, which yeah. might be no bad thing. Yeah. I think it's just a learning curve up for clients, for agencies, for contractors alike. There's there's a large contingent workforce within the yeah, UK. Yeah, yeah. Pharma companies, for one, will definitely still need that yes. level of service, and things will change. Either pay rates will go up, additional benefits, some something will happen to help. Yeah, kind of they've got to make it work. Yeah, they? exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you know, all the contract staff that are currently working can't be converted to permanent. No. Um, so the jobs aren't going to disappear yeah, overnight. The jobs no, aren't so. going to disappear overnight. But it's just yeah. making sure you meet those status tests. Uh, yes. And that's, that's the, the hard graft you could do now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, this is only three weeks away now. Only three weeks away, but it's coming. Yeah. 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 Okay. One of the key questions um, right. that, that I kind of see from contractors, but equally from, a, from somebody that works for a recruitment agency is what are umbrella companies doing about all this? Right. And, um, <laughs> I think from, from my personal opinion, there's been uh, a little confusion uh, with the contractors as to can they offer something different to what we can offer as an agency with a payroll department? It, it, can they offer anything different? Is it? I mean, am I wrong here? I, I assume they can only offer what we can I offer. Think, yeah, I mean, I, th I think they're another forum for allowing people to deal with the responsibilities yeah. of being inside IO35. Yeah. Whether they are as well geared up to do it as you are, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, umbrella companies unfortunately have come, become quite tainted in relation to mm. they've been structures to try yeah. and avoid actually paying the right amount of income tax. Yes. I've seen all sort of press coverage about come and join our umbrella company, you only pay 2% tax and I'm just wondering yeah. well, how does that work, it's not real world. Yeah. So, so I actually think credibility within agencies yeah. is, is much stronger. And I think that's where the yeah. confusion is coming from because the contractors, you can't blame them, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're seeing all these kind of ways of working and, and fair enough if you're an agency that doesn't have a payroll department, you need to partner with an umbrella mm. company yeah. to be able to provide that service. But I, I guess for me it's the, it, it's the breakdown of the... Yeah. the rate mm. and what they're going to be taking home. I and mean, we're getting some uh, some umbrella companies stating that 
people can take home eighty to ninety percent of their growth. Yeah, it's it's, 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 it's not good. it's not right, and it's right um, on the aggressive scale of tax so planning. Yeah. I, mean, one I, of I the think the nature of what you're doing is, is different in the in the agency world. You're looking to actually um, help the contractor, mm. make sure he's engaged in the right way, make sure he meets his filing responsibility. I just yeah. get the feeling that the umbrella company structure is almost about trying to reduce the overall yes. tax charge in, in yeah, quite an yeah. aggressive fashion. Yeah. 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 I mean, we, we've we've certainly seen um, some people have been coming up to us with say, "Oh, my, this umbrella yeah. is giving us a great deal," and it has been proven with case law, and people have been fined a load of back taxes. If it's too good to be, if it looks too good to be true, it's, it's it not is. true. Yeah, yeah. And HMRC, one of the things they have said is, they won't actually go after the umbrella companies; they'll go after the individual. Yeah, great. It's easier to yeah, get yeah, the individual. Yeah. So the umbrella company, if they are offering a scheme that, whether it's loan-based scheme or yeah, whether it's yeah, yeah. loads of expenses, yeah, chances are that doesn't follow the, the actual rule. No, I agree. I think the, the days of those sort of structures. Are, be yeah, they, 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 sorry, Liam. On saying that, there, there are a lot of good umbrella companies that Absolutely. are offering really good services, yeah. but they are the ones that are controlled by the FSCA. Yeah, um, they're regulated. And they're highly regulated, yeah, and, yeah. and and you know we work very closely with a number of those. Mm. But it is one thing I would say to, to any contractor, be very careful of the umbrella company you're looking at, and make sure you've done your homework on them. I know you've got um, a list of questions and yeah, I mean the, that, we, we send well, out to people that you should that. ask of an umbrella yeah. company. We've yeah. got a preferred list of around five yeah. um, umbrella companies that we use that we know uh, do do things. Yeah. You know, as 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 we do, I guess in a, yeah. In a page so you've, got, you've done your due diligence. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Not, and yeah. and and I think people have just got to be mm. aware of that. And, and to be honest, we've had some clients as well that have have, have actually. Going back to the question about the blanket determination that have mm. said, in addition to the blanket determination, we're not going to use any oh, anyone yeah. other than an agency to yeah. work on a pay as you basis because yeah, yeah. we don't want to risk a PSC and we don't want to risk using an umbrella company that's not doing okay. it correctly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's interesting that some clients out there yeah, are, I think are quite risk averse. Yeah, well, I think that's a good point. That this, those aggressive structures have gone largely because mm. there was the independent review of the loan charge that just yes. came out from Parliament yes. in December, yeah. which sort of effectively confirmed that where you have taken a loan out of a, an umbrella company, then you'll be treated as if it's remuneration by any other way yeah. and pay income tax on it. Right. Yeah. Was uh, it since like 50,000 people are going to have to pay quite a lot of yeah, tax yeah. back on that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. quite a lot. Yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, some of the other questions that contractors have, have mentioned are, are um, if, if, if I am determined to be inside out is there anything I can do about my contract to change it? Or is there anything I can do about my way of working? Well, um, I mean, it, obviously we talked about statement yeah. to work. Yeah. Actually, yeah. project-based work is quite yeah. a good way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Yes. But then working through the status tests and the nature of your relationship and looking yeah. at who's in control, you yeah. know, um, what rights and responsibilities have you got? Where's the financial reward? If, if you really are desperate to be outside IR35, then you need to make sure that you meet some of those status tests. Mm. Yeah, but ultimately, it's down to the end user. Uh, well, well that's of course, the whole point of the change yeah. Yeah. on the 6th it's, of April. It's, it's not, if you, if you work outside IR35, and you, but you want to stay in the same role, it's not down to you. Yeah. You can discuss with yeah. your hiring company to see whether you actually can change the way yeah. your job works yeah. or the role is. But if, so they, the, if they determine some of the concern was that the hiring managers probably weren't a, as aware of IR thirty five as we would have hoped. Yeah, yes. we, we've been at a number of events and they they, they didn't know anything about no. it. Well, I've I've got a client at the moment and they are reassessing a quite a few roles because mm. I think they've initially given that responsibility to the hiring manager who. You know, may have only heard about it yeah. in January. Yeah, great. Yeah. Um, and therefore, you know, aren't I guess well read up on the the whole process really. Yeah. So they're just looking been, for a hire. Yeah, and yeah. there's some dis disagreement between the contractors and the determination. So therefore, the company is like blanket covered that role and said, mm. okay, well, let's reassess because this yeah. role here is very similar to that role, and this one's not outside our thirty five. Yeah. So how can we yeah. you know best look at yeah, that yeah. really? Yeah. So it's interesting. I think it, what's worrying for me is it's getting very close to the sixth April. <laughs> yeah. And we're still at this initial negotiation stage with certain clients, but um but we seem to be getting there somewhat. And I think contractors are suddenly kind of realising that, that we don't have an option. Uh, I yeah. think many of them were expecting the rules to be deferred. I think yes. I think we I think we were towards the end of last year. I think come mm. the start of this year and, and the election of the new Government. And the momentum on it. And yeah. yeah. Um, 
you know, we kind of knew it was going to come yeah, to great, force. Yeah. Um, if it had been a hung parliament, I think it might have been a slightly different situation. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, could have been. But uh, um, it's too, that, too far the other way. I think it, now. It yeah. is. Yeah. So sixth of April, the the the, the, the low, or it doesn't change. the uh, it's it changes slightly as to where the determination is coming. Correct. From. Yes. Um, so. One of the questions that I've actually answered to some contractors is, can I focus my attention on finding a job within a company that's fits the three th smaller points, company. you know, the smaller yeah, company, yeah. the lower turnover, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And my answer is yes, of course you can. You can do that. Yep. But there are only a certain amount of companies out yeah. there that are, that are of that size. And similarly to the public sector, I guess, when that happened is that everybody went to the private sector to try and get jobs and stay yeah. within their public services company. You know, we're, we're going to be in that situation again, really. We're going to have all these people that are trying to focus in on these smaller companies. Yeah. And obviously so, the smaller companies do not hire as many people exactly. at all. No, and a lot no. of the time, the smaller companies hire permanent staff. It's yeah. As a contract recruiter, um, it's rare that companies of that size tend to take on large yeah. number of contractors. So if you're happy in your job at the moment and you like the job that you're doing, I would seriously consider, you know, looking around because it's not looking around, sorry, because you know yeah. this is going to be happening across the board to everybody yeah, yeah. So, uh, and i yeah. think you need to think wider than the tax savings yeah absolutely yeah. You know, commercially you know. financial yeah. stability happiness well, in your that's, job happiness in that's your job. one of the reasons why as well as we, we advise all our contractors to to speak to people such as yourself yeah. to speak to their financial advisors so as they can get a good understanding of it and, and see if they can actually Mm -hmm. Speak to yeah. the hiring company to, yeah. to change the way they work. Yeah, great. Find out what's best. I think it is very important because we can't advise anybody. Mm. Um, whereas you are, obviously, yeah. that's your job. Yeah. That's what you're paid to do. Yeah. Um, and obviously, people uh, similar companies to yourselves. So, mm. you know, he's a good guy if anybody wants to speak to <laughs> yeah, him about much. it. <laughs> Commission's on its way. Yeah. Okay. So, just as a, an aside note, I guess, to everyone that's out there wondering what to do next, is that CK. The CK Group as a whole, we offer a pay-as-you-earn payroll department. So we have done that since 1991 when we were first uh, established as a company. So um, over the years, it's pre been predominantly the area that I've I've recruited in and, and managed contractors within. So if you are looking for a company to help your uh, contract role go forward and payroll you, um, then that's definitely something that we can offer. Yeah. Um, or if you just want some advice and want to have a bit more of a chat about things, then give me a call. Um, my details are on the screen below and I'll be happy to talk to you about that. Okay, thanks, Russ. Okay, well, th that's uh, basically gone through all our questions. I hope you found it useful. Um, as Russ said, if you want to get in touch with ourselves for any further information, we're more than happy to help, uh, whether you're a contractor who works for us or you're working through your own personal services company and you want to know more information. Um, you'll have all our details for Russ, Chris and myself, and do not hesitate to give us a call if we can help you at all. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you.